Hello, so today, this is a follow-up to yesterday's video. Um, the ending of that one got cut off. Uh, if you haven't seen that one yet, I'd recommend checking that one out first. So I've already explained how the whole board is kind of put together. And I'm just going to show you the test here. You can hear the speaker. You can see out of the keyboard port there the... LEDs are counting up. Um, so what this is actually testing is all the memories being tested. Uh, ROM, obviously, as the boot code. Uh, we're using the interrupts, so that's out of the lower memory bank here. And I put my stack in the middle one, so if neither of these or any of these weren't working, it would uh, it would uh, crash. Uh, the keyboard port is obviously working along with all the decoding. And then this count is off of the timer interrupt, so interrupt 8, IRQ 0, and it's being controlled by the clock here. So let me show you um, in this other ROM here, I have it set up to use the internal clock instead of the uh, external clock for the timer. So that's the uh, internal clock. You can see that's considerably faster. And if we plug our speaker in, It's much higher pitch. So that's the uh, functionality of the board. Um, I've cleared off the red board, but this is plugged in. On the other side, the uh, power wires are connected, and that's how this is all working. So next step will be to uh, red board up a keyboard port, like the uh, PS2 or USB, and try to get it to work. Um, I'm going to explain how the registers work for the I.O. Uh, selection. So this, having internal I.O.s, you have to set them up. So I kind of made a little list here. And this is the I.O. address. So starting at the very top, these are the registers that set up the V40. Um, this is not necessarily 100% correct or accurate, but this is just the best I could come up with the uh, PDF that I've been using for references. So the top, all Fs, is uh, reserved. The next one, uh, E. So this, uh, this register selects whether to use the interrupt pin or the... Uh, internal device for interrupt uh, one and two. Uh, can't remember right off the bat here, but so in bit three and two here, you'll put in a, a one or a zero. Uh, this one, a little S above it, that's for the serial port. So if you're using the internal serial port, so I want to say this is a interrupt one, IRQ one that is, which should be mapped to interrupt nine. And then this is interrupt two, so IRQ2, and they'd be mapped to interrupt uh, like 10 in decimal. Um, I was just reading the 1 and the 0 here. That was in the book, and that actually enables a serial port somehow, so I've got to read up more on this bit of the uh, register. Then uh, D here, we've got the op select. So this enables your serial port, your timer, interrupt, and the direct memory access. So a one enables, a zero disables. And by default, I'm pretty sure these are all zeros and these bits don't matter. And then C here, we've got the upper address byte. Um, so the whole length there, you put in any byte range that you want in memory. Obviously it can't overlap with the registers, but typically uh, you put zero in there because you want your uh, 
interrupt control or your timer to be in the lowest uh, I.O. ports. So, I mean, you, you could put like 8 up here or 10, whatever. It doesn't matter, but I put 0. And then B, you've got the... So the direct memory access controller. So this is going to be the lower byte of the memory. So if you want to match like a PC, this would be zero. So you'd have zero, zero. Um, you got A here. This is the interrupt controller. So the lower byte we put in uh, 20. So it's zero, 20. So um, that'll give us IO port 20. And then the uh, timer circuit. We're going to put 40 in there. And so that would be, you know, four and then a zero over here. And that makes you zero, 40. Then uh, serial port. Um, I think I just kind of threw in a random number like D or something to kick it out of the way somewhere. And so that's what these five do here. That assigns your addresses. So if you didn't want to be PC compatible, you could put whatever you wanted in there. Next, uh, seven is reserved, uh, six. This is a weight control register. I have not entirely figured out what this one is for. Um, in the book, it shows all these as like not used, um, but I got to figure out this a little bit better. You've got uh, the weight control one register in five. So what this does, you can set up how many weight cycles for each. And what this is, is if you got slow IOs or slow memory, you can slow down the in the read and write cycles. So if you know much about the 8088, you got the T weight. So this adds up to three. So you can put two digits in here. So a zero, zero would be no weight. All ones would be three weights. And then you've got the, so this is IO. You got upper memory, how many weights? Middle memory, how many weights? And lower memory. And then number four here, this is what determines what upper memory is and lower memory is. So this isn't like 32K increments. I want to say like zero would be 32K. And this starts at the very bottom. So you're saying that the bottom 32K is what you designate as lower memory. Put all ones in there, it goes up to 512K. So conveniently for us with my project, you just put all ones in here and that designates low memory. Upper memory is the same way, but it starts at the top and you put your number in here and it determines how big of memory your upper memory is. So like I put like 64 for my ROM and then middle memory is just everything that's between these two. Uh, number three is reserved. Now, I don't know if these reserved registers are actually reserved or they're functional. This is just out of the book that I have. Uh, two is the refresh cycle. Uh, this is for your refresh pin on the ISA port. Uh, you'd be for like your DRAM refresh. In the book, I said, make sure bit seven is zero to disable it. And like, I don't use it and, and they didn't use it on theirs. But if you needed a refresh cycle, um, I'm not sure exactly what you got to put in here, but it's probably some number and it's probably just the count. Um, and then down here we've got, it's the ticks register, zero. The first three bits are not used. And then what this does is it determines whether or not you're going to use the external clock or the internal clock. So we've got uh, for timer two, one, and zero. And so I've set it so that you put a one in there for the external clock, external, external, that's just through a zero. I'm not using timer two for, or timer one for anything. And then you got your pre-scale here. And what this does is it's clock divider and it's uh, like two through like 16, uh, depending on what you put in here for, uh, and that's only for the internal clock. So. Anyway, hopefully that's good information for anybody trying to program a V40. Um, thanks for checking it out.